Hey everybody, welcome back. This is my third video on uh, calling Fortran functions from C. And this video is going to deal with uh, what to do with two-dimensional matrices. And I apologize, I usually like to type everything, all the code and everything, because it keeps me moving a little bit at a slower pace, so it's easy to understand. Uh, so I don't talk too fast, but in this case I just had too much to type, so I'm just going to walk through something I've already written. So anyways, the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, the differences in how C and Fortran uh, store a two-dimensional matrix. So in C, a two-dimensional matrix is stored in row, it's called row major form, and in Fortran it's stored in column major form. Um, so for example, let's say I have this three by three matrix here. Uh, this, this has elements one through nine. Uh, the C declaration for that matrix might look like this. The Fortran might look like this. Um, and what I mean by this column major and row major is that in C, this two-dimensional matrix is stored along rows. So the block of memory that stores this matrix is going to go row by row. It's going to store 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. But in Fortran, this matrix is stored along columns. So it's going to store... 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9. All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of the, the little annoying thing about uh, working between Fortran and C. But I'm going to show you kind of a, a way to deal uh, with that issue uh, by writing a C++ class. So first I'm going to show you what my class does here, actually. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm assuming that you have some C++ knowledge, um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of details about a lot of this stuff. Um, if you have you know, any issues, you might, you might Google if I use a word that, you don't that you're not familiar with or something. Anyways, for this example, I'm going to use a 2 by 3 matrix uh, and set it to values 1 through 6. So... I have my constructor here, which is going to take two arguments defining the size of the matrix. And then I'm going to use uh, operator overloading to define what the parentheses mean. So I'm going to be able to uh, access the elements in this matrix, you know, using this kind of simple Fortran-esque uh, notation with parentheses uh, being indexed at 1. So, for example, you know, when I call 1, 3 here, all I'm doing is uh, accessing this, you know, row 1, column 3, which is, in this case, 3, and I'm setting an equal to 3. So, this block here is just defining the numbers in this matrix. Okay, so let's go to my uh, C++ implementation here real quick. I have three private variables. Uh, one of them is going to store... Uh, the data for the Fortran matrix. And then I'm going to have two values that store the number of rows and the number of columns in the matrix. So uh, one thing that I, that I need to mention real quick, too, is um, a lot of people in C will represent a two-dimensional uh, array as a double pointer. Uh, for example, like this. Um, I don't think as far as I know, there's not a way to pass that to Fortran, so we need to just use a one-dimensional array and access the elements. Oh, let me say it this way. Uh, we need a, we need a one-dimensional array that represents a two-dimensional matrix that's stored in this column major Fortran order. So here's our one-dimensional array. Got the number of rows, number of columns. Um, Going to show you, I'll show you how to access the elements, individual elements, in a second. So it's going to be a constructor that allocates memory for the matrix. It's going to be a destructor that deletes the memory or frees the memory. It's going to be a function for printing it neatly to the console, uh, which uh, isn't really directly what this tutorial is about, but it's it's nice to be able to see. All right, then I have a function that will multiply the matrix by some scalar. And this is going to be actually calling an external Fortran function, which I'll show you in a minute. All right, then I have this function for returning the Fortran data. 
Um, if you're familiar with C++, you, uh, you know why you would do this. Um, if you're not, um, basically, you know, in C++, you have private and public variables. And for instance, you know, if, if you define the number of rows as private, uh, that means that outside the class, people aren't allowed to modify or access uh, that variable. So the reason you'd want to do that is you don't want like a three by three matrix that you've allocated with that much space and then have somebody come in and change the number of rows without, you know, reallocating memory or, you know, doing all the other work that needs to be done. Okay, so this just returns the Fortran data in case you wanted to uh, use it in another function outside of the class. Okay, then this operator overloading here. Uh, it's just defining, I'm defining what the parenthesis operator means. So it's allowing me to, you know, use the parentheses on this class instance here and uh, put two values in and access, you know, an element in this matrix. All right, so let's look at the C file real quick. All right, so in the previous tutorials, I, I showed you how to format a function name and everything. Um, one difference in this is I added uh, these two lines, the x turn C, and of course the brackets. Uh, the reason you need to do that is because, oh, well, you can Google what, what, what x turn C means, but basically it has to do with uh, the fact that in C++ you can define multiple functions with the same name as long as they take different arguments. Uh, but you can't do that in C, and you can't do that in Fortran. So, um, this kind of uh, facilitates um, the issue between the languages by declaring it that way. All right, so let's look at the constructor and destructor for the class. Uh, the constructor is going to take the number of rows and the number of columns. Uh, it's going to remember the number of rows and the number of columns, and then it's going to allocate memory for this one-dimensional array here. Um, and the number of elements it needs is the number of rows times the number of columns. So, you know, a three by four matrix has three times four or 12 elements. So uh, we need 12 elements in this one dimensional array. All right, and the destructor is just gonna free that memory. All right, then I have this pretty print function. Um, like I said, all that does is print the matrix to the console so it's easy to see. Uh, so we're not going to worry about that, really. Okay. Then I have the scalar multiplication function, which is going to call my external Fortran function. It's going to send it uh, that private variable data. It's going to tell me how many rows there are, how many columns there are, and some scalar to multiply the matrix by. So uh, this Fortran function and it takes in the matrix, number of rows, number of columns, and a scalar. Uh, and the matrix is defined as in and out because we're going to modify it. And the scalar is just in because we're not going to modify it inside the function. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply this matrix by uh, the scalar. And Fortran's nice. One of the nice things about Fortran is you don't have to do loops necessarily to uh, multiply every element in a matrix by a number. You can just you know, do it this way, and it knows that what you mean is to multiply the whole matrix by a scalar. All right, and the last thing here, uh, which kind of makes this whole thing work and makes it easy, is this, this operator overloading that I've done here. So what I'm saying is, you know, when you use the parentheses operator on a class instance, uh, you have this class instance that I've called M here. I've given it two numbers, the row and the column. Uh, first, it's going to make sure that the numbers that were given are within the range um, of it, that you don't access a column that's not there or a row that's not there. So we put an assertion to deal with that. Okay. And remember, this is just a one-dimensional array representing a two-dimensional object. So uh, this is kind of the tricky part, and you're going to have to change this change this if you want to index by zero instead of one. But basically all this does is uh, 
it does the math that's required to get from this two-dimensional matrix to this uh, one-dimensional Fortran array stored in column major order. Um, so it's a function that takes in the row number and the column number uh, and returns, you know, which element it is in this one-dimensional array. Okay, so once that's set up, we don't need to worry about it anymore. And the last thing I want to talk about real quick is how to compile this. Oh, actually, before I show you that, I'm just going to go over this one more time real quick. So I've allocated... I've allocated memory for a two by three matrix now with this function or with this class constructor. I've set all the elements in the matrix to be this matrix here basically. Okay, so I'm going to print the matrix. I'm going to multiply every element in the matrix by two and then print it again. So I've used a make file here. Uh, you don't have to. And if you don't know how to make a make file, um, that's out of the scope of this video, but basically all you have to do is type these individual compile commands here from bottom to top and it, it should work for you. So you compile the Fortran function by itself with the gFortran compiler. You can compile the C++ class. You can use the G++ compiler. And you compile the main. And then you combine all the object files together. Um, and one difference in this tutorial that I didn't do in the other two is I'm com I'm combining my object files with G++ now instead of gFortran. Um, so what I need to do is add a link to the gFortran library. Um, so just add this flag and it'll probably work for you. If not, you might be using a different version of the compiler. Uh, but hopefully this works. So let me just go ahead and compile everything. All right, uh, then I'll go ahead and run it. As you can see, it did what we wanted to do. Uh, define this matrix and multiply it by two and print it out two times, which is exactly what we told it to do. So again, this is just one way to deal with the whole issue of uh, handling a Fortran matrix in C without you know, having too much of a headache. Um, there's there's probably other ways to do it, I'm sure, and if you're using C instead of C++, you can do this all in a struct. Um, or if you want to do it this way, uh, you can add more methods to have other matrix operations or overload more operators to do all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, again, this is kind of just an introduction, and you know, it's a way that uh, I like to do it that's easy. Um, but anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, take care.